Welcome back. Last Man in episode number 92. Obviously, lots of news to talk about across hockey, not just playoffs. We got world championships. We got some coach signings, um, some miscellaneous signings, and obviously the most important signing that could have happened since the last podcast is. what We're all around 26, yet we're doing a podcast and not being a GM of an NHL team. Oh, yeah. Correct. Yeah, you know, like, I hate when news like this uh, makes mainstream news. Oh! Because then my mom hears about it. My dad, too. Yeah, and then my mom, shoot, my mom does not watch sports at all. Like, my dad got me into sports. We both love sports. That's all we talk about. My sisters know about sports because of me, like, and my dad. Yeah. And my mom was like, hey, Cameron, do you, are you going to be running a hockey team? I'm like, I actually do run a hockey team. I've been doing it for three years, Mom. <laughs> She's like, oh, do you get paid for it? I was like, no. She's like, well, maybe, maybe you should work on that. It's like, wow. Thanks, Mom. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank Just you. mean. Yeah. Pierce is deep. That's very impressive, though. So my, we'll my, talk about My it. dad had to say, he's like, I, I don't understand what you need to do to actually be successful, but uh, follow the footsteps this guy followed. And I'm like, Dad, you have connections to certain NHL scouts that you should be hooking me up with if you want me to have these opportunities. And also, you didn't create your own, like, Hockey Steps website at, like, 18. Yeah, exactly. Like coding a website. Yeah. I'm not smart enough for that. I am I'm with you. I don't know if Dad knows know. something about coding. No. 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 I tried it. I tried it in grade 10. Oh, it's yeah. Hard. We all took it's that hard. course. It's <laughs> awful. It's terrible. It's not easy. Computer science was the worst. Uh, Mr. Pearson? Awful. Yep. Mr. Pearson, yeah. We probably had the same class. Awful. Yep. Terrible. Yep. I missed Dad and I had uh, several classes together in high school. One of our and favorites. And university. Yes, and university. World Issues, where our t- teacher actually That's put on a mask to wake somebody up from a nap, and it was the funniest thing ever. Or he'd put a rubber snake around or, the neck. Yeah, that too. Ooh, That's a good one. That wouldn't do good on me. That teacher did not like me very much. No? Because I didn't do a lot of work. He I turned everything in, in the last day of school. He was interesting. Let's put it that way. He was different. The only topic I was really, because it was World Issues, the only topic that I was like gung-ho about was conspiracy theories about 9-11. I love that class for conspiracy people at 9-11. Greg's going to go 10 Cloverfield Lane pretty soon. <laughs> Great film. I it is. I watched it I twice on it. the weekend. Twice? Was phenomenal. Oh, you got that. I watched it once, and then I was at, we were at someone's house, and they wanted to watch it again. I was like, sure. Uh, Dan, it's awesome. not out yet. So I don't yeah, know I don't know what you're doing. Do what are, DVDs exist still? Oh, yeah, right. Totally DVDs. Yeah, mm. whatever. Cl- I are you actually... talking Cloverfield or Cloverfield Lane? 10 Cloverfield Lane. That's... It's not out yet. That's illegal. Yeah, you're you doing illegal things. We can't be associated with this man. Where's that clip from? Like, apart from wrestling, wake up is feeding time. I'm sorry, you're not coming back, Ryback. Um, <laughs> his he just had his contract. Yeah, yeah okay. he's in continue, continue, Anyways, continue, continue. But where's that clip? It's like, wake up, America, wake up. I don't know. Shameful. Uh, I'm on the internet too long. I, I can hear the words. Birth- Wake up, America! I don't know. If that's oh, weird. <laughs> hey, Wake! Did no. you hear about uh, Budweiser? No, they're America. They're renamed. They're rebranding themselves to the end of the election to call be called America. 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 So it's like, what are you going to drink? Some P- some Pabst Blue Ribbon? You're going to have some some Bud Light Budweiser? Or are you going to have America? You're going to have yeah. America. You're gonna have so America. is that branding in Canada? No, just the North America. J- North America. North America. I can drink America. You can drink America. I can drink America. Can drink I America. feel great. I, yeah. I want to nice feel the red, white, and freedom. blue go through my body and be engulfed as, like, pretend to be a personified version of a bald eagle. Greg just oh, wants to get okay. pissed or drunk. He wants to what? He just wants to get pissed I or don't drunk. drink at all. Ever. That's a lie. On Mondays. Oh, just sometimes. insider trading if you go to America. I do it every goddamn time. I did it this weekend. I ordered iced tea. Oh, it's you actually do it. iced tea. No, yep. sweet tea. Ah. You gotta order sweet tea. Well, that's that's what, what it is. That's our iced tea. That's but our iced Americans tea. must hate us when they come here. They're like, "I'll get some iced tea," and they're like, "Oh God, what is? There, there's there's sugar a pound in, of sugar in my drink." Here's the thing, though, is maybe that's what made them want get sweet tea. They're like, "Shit, this isn't iced tea. This is sweet tea. We need to bring this." And then America. Okay, insider, I'm there again in a month. So insider trading. Mm-hmm. Insider trading. Uh, trying. Get Good sweet tea. Say get Canadian iced tea. Ice See what tea. they say. Oh, See yeah. what they do. Iced tea is literally a, it's tea with ice in it. I know yeah. it's gross. Can I, I get a it. green iced tea? Here's a green tea with ice in it. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. You want sugar? Chill. Fuck up. <laughs> no, I tried. Remember when we went to the states? <laughs> yeah. And there was um your your mom who went, we went with we went for a concert. She had like this like like coarse sugar or something, but it wasn't mixing into my drink. 
because my drink is too cold. Oh, okay. like just cold. So I would literally slurp and like or slurp, 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 and have like all iced tea, and then the next slurp I'd have like chunks of oh. sugar rock in my mouth. <laughs> it was good when I had the sugar rock. It sucked when I didn't. Welcome to a hockey podcast. Yes, we are mm-hmm. almost eight minutes into the podcast, and we have not mm-hmm. spoken anything other than absolute nonsense. So this is last man in. This is what we've been doing for ninety two weeks of our lives. Almost been here for two years. Very it's soon. True. Very soon. Yeah. Road to episode 100 is coming along smoothly. I have now tested out our theory with Hangouts. Did you? And I know how to work it. Okay. So, so now I just got to sign up and do it? I, I'm signed up. I have our, our stuff's fine. Okay. Because we can just do it straight from our Gmail. And then we'll just be oh, inviting sweet. people. So, once again, uh, for those who don't know, if you're a fan of this podcast, you want to be part of our... Episode 100 extra- extravaganza, where we talk to you directly, and we talk about sports, and we'll talk about life, and all that other stuff. It'll probably be like two and a half hours, so just bear Actually with that. Actually two and a half hours? I would love for Are it to be a me? nice... Well, we can release it in different parts. We can be like part one, part two, and then... See, I like how Greg's talking about this. Like, no, no, we'll just do it in chunks. It's he's looking at me because I'm editing it. That's why yep. he's looking at me. So he doesn't care. I'm no, I can edit it. It'll be, no, no, It'll be done on my laptop, so I'll edit it. Oh, no, that's fine. Whatever, I'll figure okay. it out. I don't know Either how we're going to do the audio part. I have it all figured out. It's called worry. Friendship Land, by the way. Yes, it's called Friendship Land. So we're if you want to be a part a of that... of the room we sit in? If you want to be a part of that, make sure you have a Gmail account. Make sure you know the password to it. And make sure you're signed up with Google Hangouts, and then we'll be able to do it all from there. And it'll be sweet. So we're not doing Skype. We'll be doing Google Hangout. A lot easier for me to record, and a lot easier for me to grab the audio from that. So that's update on episode 100, which is only a few weeks away. Eight. And episode 101 is going to even be even better. Yes, because it'll be about the drift. No, episode but 101 is going to be Infoland. Infoland. Brought to you by Greg. Episode 101 Infoland, where you break down Corsi and Fenner for everything. Oh, that's right, Kit. Yeah. I got it. Well, I mean, if they Because 101 is... It starts... There's... Episode 98 will be the draft. 99 will be free agency. Hopefully. No, no, it will be. Oh, okay. Because it lines oh, up Oh, yeah, because we missed four weeks. That's right. Yeah, yeah. For those who don't know, we missed some time in our start of our so podcast. So it's actually week 96. Yes. But technically not. No, we don't count properly. You have to wait. You've no. heard, exactly. you heard us do math. We're not. We We're don't. Not. There's only 50 videos in our first year of doing this. Yeah, because we, we missed, didn't do... We no, missed no, a we, Christmas episode at some point. Because we're well, like, well, we the have The first Christmas. one. Yeah. We missed the first one, yeah. Okay, so... Well, actually, tech, Greg well, and I are actually still missing our Christmas episode. No, not... Because you have not given us a gift yet! You're a monster! You said Greg and you. Yeah, yeah no, not down Greg's the one that's... I owe you guys a Christmas. It's true. It's true. We've already paid... Hey, Dan and uh, I have officially paid off a round one debt to Greg, if you hear him slurping. He's got a slurping in his Here's head. the bright side. It's been six months since Christmas. Only six more to go. <laughs> You're right. You're it right. has not even been... It's been five. Not even five oh, yet. You know what? It's close. It's not close. It's not... I can't wait till Mary half Christmas. Greg will probably give us, like, a bite out of a cookie that he brings. He's like, here, enjoy my mer Christmas. Don't take my ideas. Yeah. All right. We should probably talk about sports. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's so much going on that we talk about. Yeah. There's so many things. Um, eight and a half minutes in. Uh, That's so twice you've said eight. And I half. know. It's yeah. it's like the Bill Burr time uh, stands. It's still. like the Bill Burr Philadelphia special where like where he like rags on Philly. He's like I five have, minutes left. <laughs> I have four minutes left, and then he like talks for a minute and a half. Five minutes. It's like <laughs> you <laughs> missed the math there, Excuse Bill. Me, sir. But still one of my favorite rants of all time. Oh, he's just my favorite so comedian. He, That's, I think he's become my favorite comedian. Actually, just to bring it around to wrap it up, uh, this weekend I saw, I just realized that Carrie and I, we go see a lot of comedy together. Buster, he's been on the podcast now. We went to go see John Caparulo. I've now seen five out of my top six comedians live. And the only, the last one I won't ever get to see passed away, Robin Williams, who's my number one. But oh, I only yeah. just, he never came close and... Uh, he had, he stopped doing comedy by the time, or he had stopped touring by the time I was old enough to be able to see him. So, mm-hmm. but oh, yeah. uh, very impressive. Continue. Hockey. On. Let's talk the NHL. Sure. Yes. Yeah. yeah I, I think I'm prepared right. for this. Right. It's time. I think right. we're finally prepared. You know what I like? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Skittles. <laughs> Taste the rainbow. All right. We now have one series done. We have our first <clears throat> team in a conference final. We have, and Dan shakes his head because he wanted the Islanders to be that, and that was Tampa Bay. So we'll touch on that after we talk about and set up the two Game 7s that go on tomorrow night, both of the Western Conference. All right, one starts tomorrow night, the other one is on Thursday. Correct. So, let's set it up first. Let's go with St. Louis and Dallas 
a series that I don't think any of us thought was going to go this far. Um, not not no, seven. We all picked St. Louis in six. Yes, we did, and they failed miserably. They did fail miserably. So not for lack of trying. The first thing I want to talk about is game six. I don't know if you guys watched it last night. Yes. Uh, first, yep. First period. Kay. So I have a quick question. We can obviously dissect, give our predictions for tomorrow, and all that stuff. After Brian Elliott's performance yesterday, is it safe to say that he'll start in Game Seven, or that he'll be that Jake Allen will be in that? Yeah, Brian Elliott, he's all the way. He didn't, he didn't Even though that he was pulled yesterday, yeah, it yeah, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Even you though that Sportsnet All Star analyst Nick Kripios argued for five minutes about how the Blues can't win anything without Jake Allen in that. And how they won the last series? How and, did and they the do game much? They won in this series. But all I'm doing I is, have a I think he's playing you. devil's advocate with that. Though. How many times has Carl Edmund been pulled in the playoffs? A lot. Who's going to start Game Seven? Antonioni. No, he hasn't played. I know. Yeah. I know. He hasn't played this series, or Come much. On. No, I, I I know. But all I was doing is playing Louis devil's had advocate. More shots than Dallas had shot attempts yesterday. Yeah. They played they a very good not defensive have game. Have lost that game. No. They, they had a bad first period. It was a bad first bit of goaltending for Brian Elliott. And obviously, but. that's the bonus of having two good goalies. You're able to bring a guy in and settle your team down. They could have still won that game, but, you know, luck wasn't on their side. And I think that they're going to be very hungry tomorrow night when it comes down to Game 7. What I figured out in this series, and everyone has, whoever scores, like, gets ahead is probably winning this. Because all the goals, like, here, let's look at Game 3, 6-1 Blues. Game 4, 3-2 Stars. Stars scored first. I think. Um, stars are scored first then, in a lot of And games. then four, game five, four one blues. Game six, three two stars, and stars went up three nothing at the end of the first. And there's been, there was, uh, I think it was game two actually, where St. Louis was up two or three nothing, and the stars rallied back, and I believe won in overtime, if not the last Yeah, David Backus, OT. Um, nonetheless, I think that this series is a seesaw battle, and. It's about who breaks whose spirit first, and I think the st- Blues' spirit was broken yesterday when they're down 3 nothing, and it was tough to come back. It's tough to come back against a team that you know that you can push back as much as you want, and they can just push right back and take the goals back, right? So you get one or two, you're feeling great, all of a sudden, Jamie Ben goes down the wing, snipe goal. So obviously they're play- playing on their toes a little bit more. They play great defensively after the first period. Unfortunately, I just couldn't put the puck past Carl Lennon. And I think sometimes it is that worry of, if I go after this puck and make that aggressive play, they have the ability to turn around and score on me. I think that's got to enter their minds at some point, but I still thought they That's the go. Blues going, that's the blues going. on the start. You also yeah. have to realize Dallas' season was on the line yesterday. They're not that's going to hold anything back. That's true. Because quite frankly, I don't think this series has been, it's 3-3, I don't think it's been that close. I think St. Louis has been far and above a better team. But even Dallas though just has Even though it's 3-3. They've caught some bad breaks, I think. But Dallas has like, has that they they have the offense to squeak out a win, even when they don't even when they play like crap like yesterday. So I don't know. Yeah, that no, that's a very good point, Dan. That's just how yeah. I've seen it. Because St. Louis six one four one, like and Dallas squeaks out one goal wins. It, it, He's got a great point. I guess. Yeah. No. No. He has but a great if point. If Dallas squeaks out a one goal win tomorrow, then they're in the next round. It it's comes really, down to one game. But, it doesn't doesn't matter. Yep. Uh, what happened past, and that's the problem. Like, I'm almost inclined to take Dallas. They're at home tomorrow. It's a one game series right now, and they need to win it. What have they done all season in one game games, mm-hmm. like series? They've won them. They've been that good. They were the number one team in the Central Division because of it. Mm-hmm. They beat the Blues on several occasions in the regular season. So it comes down. Da- it comes down to who do you think can win a one game series? Who has a better chance to win that one game? I thought the Blues would have a better chance over the long term of a series to beat the Stars. When it comes down to one game, that might be a little bit different. Is Tyler Sagan back? Or is no, he I know he's, he's practicing today, but he's that not playing tomorrow. He's not playing tomorrow. Obviously, you know it doesn't even really matter at this point because they've got it done this far. They've gotten thirteen games without him. I thought he played one or game twelve. I guess. Yeah. That, how did he play in the one? I guess he tried it I out. I didn't see it. Because he came back and he was 100%. He tweaked yeah. it again. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's Honestly, it's a toss-up. I, I'm still hoping St. Louis wins, but it's a toss-up. I want St. Louis to win. I, I want to see... We all want St. Louis to win. We've all however... I want it for more than that. I want, I'd want. i rather see them than Dallas. Than however, I'd love to see Jamie Benn. I, I agree with... Okay, I'd love to see Jamie Benn. Don't get me wrong. But I'd li- I'm with Dan on the aspect that they've never won. 
Dallas has. I would really like to see, obviously, once we go through the rest of the picks and the breakdowns, I'd love to see St. Louis advance to the fact that it'd be really cool to see a Final Four where nobody's won, so you automatically well, get Well, we can't it. have that. That can't happen. Why? No. Because Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay has won a cup. They've won a cup in November. Oh, yeah, but I believe in Harvey Durant, so that's It fine. could be okay. three or four, though. Three or four would be incredible, and that would be like the first time in a very long time. And even like, even if Pittsburgh beats Washington, which we'll we'll discuss and we'll talk a little bit later, um, I still think that the potential for a final of whatever you have, let's say it is St. Louis, San Jose per se, that is extremely exciting from a fan standpoint. You step away from that and you say, those are teams that haven't won in a while. Pittsburgh's a much different team than they were in 09. And you see Tampa Bay, they don't have anybody from 04, because really it's 12 years later. Why would they? But it would have happened. Like, they could still have Le Cavalier. They could still have St. Louis, although St. Louis retired last year. But those guys could still be there. Yeah. But they're not. So it's completely different teams. So it, it would be interesting. And really, like, if Pittsburgh gets there, it's on the back of a different goalie with different guys scoring goals. You know, they, they have Phil Kessel on Pittsburgh now. Like, that's pretty damn exciting. And I want to see I want to see Ben Bishop shut down one of the either way, because Tampa Bay moved forward and we'll talk about this in a bit um, as we kind of try to set up the third round a little bit. But I I'm excited to whoever has to play against Ben Bishop because he's playing great hockey right now. So, game seven predictions between Blues and Stars. What do you guys think? Blues have to get on them fast. Obviously, mm-hmm. every hockey saying you can. I want Blues. I want a close game, though. I don't want the 4-1. I want, I'd want. i love to see overtime. But I, w- I will say it's going to be 3-1. No, 4-2 Blues is my guess. I, my main point, to answer your question, I want the Blues to win. I don't know about a score, but yeah, I'd, St. Louis. St. Louis. Greg? Um, <clears throat> oh, I St. Louis, but... I, would, I want to see a goaltender battle. I want to see this game go 2-2, go into overtime, and just be one of those back-and-forth overtime games like St. Louis had with Chicago on multiple occasions in the first round. I think Just the back-and-forths. I think you're better to hope for that for the other Game 7. I don't care. I want it to happen. I'm greedy, Dan. Okay. Now, before we move on to the San Jose National Series, one final question. If... San Jose, or not San Jose, sorry. If St. Louis loses tomorrow, is Ken Hitchcock's job gone? Yes. Mm, no. Is he fired? I think he's, I think he's saved himself. And for, I want to, I'm going to. For another year, I think he's saved actually, himself. Actually, yeah, I'm no, gonna, I'm with Dan. Okay. I'm going to bring Hitchcock up later. I'm gonna, just keep that in the back of your minds. Okay. Remember Hitchcock? Okay. So now, and I, I believe that he might be, but mm. in light of what happened earlier this week, which we'll get to in a bit, I don't think it will anymore just because I think the coaching market has dried up a bit because of the signings already. Okay. So Nashville never played a Game 7 coming into this year's playoffs. Not only did they play Game 7 against the Anaheim Ducks, they also now play Game 7 against the San Jose Sharks in the second round, have their first franchise opportunity to go into the third round, play in a conference final. The furthest San Jose's ever been is a conference final when they played against uh, Vancouver in 2011 and lost, I believe, in five. And they played Chicago. Um, they also they played the Hawks the year before. They got swept by the yeah. Hawks. Yeah. So, but that's most recent. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, but I, I, I totally forgot to play the Hawks. So I was just yep. saying everyone did, and so did yep. the fans. They yes. Don't okay. Remember that. No, and then do you also remember the year when the Coyotes were in the conference final and got smoked? Got absolutely Who shellacked. Did they play? Detroit King, Kings. Kings. That's Kings. Right. Kings, right? Because I mean, Coyotes beat the Hawks. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Okay. So to continue. Um. La- I, <laughs> I don't even know who scored the goal in overtime Victor yesterday. Victor Arvidsson. Why doesn't anyone know who this guy because is? Because it's Nashville. You <laughs> should reason. But they are showing so much resilience. Pecorine, other than I think it was the third goal in the game yesterday, Pecorine is playing great. He just fell on some players yesterday, let a third goal in. But their, their offense is come alive. Their defense is playing well. And Rainey is playing well. This has been a great series. It's been a great series from top to bottom. Well, let's even go back to just game four, which unfortunately Greg and I missed because we were watching a movie and we didn't invite Dan to. My bad, Dan. Sorry. Yeah, we missed the Triple OT game. Triple OT where Mike Fisher so scored. Get. But in that game, the Nationals top four, every guy, every defenseman eclipsed 45 minutes played, obviously. But like, 
I think Yossi and Weber were like scraping at like the fifty-five minute mark. If I don't, if I That's recall correctly, insane. in a one game, an hour of ice time. Mm-hmm. Oh, That's like oh. it's an hour of ice in roughly one hundred twenty minutes. And that's roughly. Yeah, and that is that's the best level of hockey. That's not yeah. just like pick up where when yeah. I double shift I'm crying by the end of it. <laughs> How would you feel if you were in a triple OT game? Like would you be hyped or would you start like being exhausted being there? Um, I'd be excited, but I'd be more nervous because the longer the game goes, the, the worse more... the worse the goal is gonna be. Exactly. And I would, me personally, I would be getting ner- nervous as the game goes on because you don't want to make mistakes, so you don't take trances, you dump it in. Me, I would dump it in, uh, and I'd be really as... hard on the stick. Like, mm-hmm. I would be nervous not to make a mistake to screw up. And that's not how you want to play hockey or any sport. I think it'd be nerve-wracking, but it'd be worse if it was an elimination game for your team. Yep. And you know what? Like, if the, if it was like, like last night, Nashville was a goal away from being done. Or two nights ago, one was, it was last no, night. No, last night. Last night they Luckily, were... they... They're, they're still going, but even though I think I want the Sharks there, and I don't know how Cam feels because I know we both picked the Sharks. We even though we love want the Sharks to win, would it not be a tr- tremendous story to see the Nashville Predators there? Oh yeah, I'm gonna. I, I won't be. Up, I, as I stated before in our picks, I wouldn't be upset if Predators won. Of course, we want the Sharks to win because everyone, not everyone, me in my mind. I have, if the Sharks make it to the conference final, they, they, they're going to be in the cup final, which is not a way you should think. But yeah. me, it's like, one, picking the Sharks because when they win this round, they're for sure winning this round and then this round. I have the Sharks going, like, in my pool. Yeah. Obviously, I picked the Flyers because I'm insane. But, like, <laughs> besides that, I have the Sharks going to the final, but it's only because it's like, oh, well, if they win this round, why wouldn't they win this round? And why wouldn't? And that's what I did with the Flyers and the Sharks. But if St. Louis wins, why wouldn't they win the next exactly. round? Exactly. They of won course. the first round, too. But that's why that's I'm okay thing. with if the Preds go because I do enjoy watching the Preds play hockey as well. So I'm, I'm okay if Blue Blues lost, or not Blues, We all the Sharks yeah. lost. We all picked the Sharks. I think Nashville's going to win tomorrow. Or Ryan Thursday. Johansson's been really good to win. watch. Yeah. He's been a treat, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I... <sighs> no one thought they'd win Game 6 against Anaheim. No one thought they'd win Game 7 against Anaheim. I... It's tough to not root for them, just a little bit. And you know what, I think... No, here's, here's the other thing. Here's the other storyline. Is, if Nashville makes it... <clears throat> to the conference finals. They'll be the first team in NHL history to win a division that they're not actually a part of. Oh, yeah, right. Metro or... They're, they're in the, they're in the central, and true. there'll be another central team that either Dallas or St. Louis will have to play. Means not only do you have to play central teams all year, now you have to go and play a central team in the conference final. Has it not happened since they changed the format? No. It's only been there one year? It's only been no, there one year. This is, the, this is the third year. This is the third year. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Third. So that's what... Now, so more and more now that, now that you guys are talking about it, I'm like, I could do with Preds in the Cup Final. Yeah. I could deal with that. Or yeah. Preds, Blues, or Stars, really. Like One of those three, I'm picking Preds but, just solely oh, because of my bias. Bias. Yeah. But if somebody... like, We talk about the Central being the toughest division in hockey... I think it has more than revealed itself as the toughest division in hockey in the playoffs alone. The fact that there's still three teams remaining from that division. Mm-hmm. The fact that we have the potential for two teams to be in the conference final. They I think, could be in the Western Conference <laughs> final. Two of the six teams. No, seven. seven. Two of the seven. Well, in, in, With. in circle. <laughs> Encompass is the word I was looking for. Encompass. Encompass the final. That's, that's awesome. It's in, I mean, it's there's incredible. only two two divisions, anyways. But, but still, no. Pacific. Nonetheless, it's still it's still tough. With today's format, it's tough because if you're for that to happen, you have to take down a one seed in the Anaheim Ducks this year, and then they have to take down the winner of San Jose and LA, who are both playing great hockey going into the playoffs. So it is a difficult feat. It's not something that's going to regularly happen. The Islanders were able to do it by beating the Panthers, and they couldn't beat Tampa Bay because it's tough to beat. Good teams in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So it's a tough feat to do. It's tough to have the same division play each other in conference finals. So, how's the game going to end up tomorrow? Or Thursday? Nash- Nashville's winning. I think. I seriously think they're going to win. I'm not rooting for them. I don't care, but I think they're going to win. Okay, I picked the Sharks. 
I'm not going to pick a winner, but I will be happy with whoever wins. That's a stupid, easy way out of it. But Cheap it's true. Out. It's Cheap I. I would. Out. I'll cheer. See, the thing is, whoever wins this series is who I'm picking to win in the next round. Well, that's fair. Because I don't want Dallas or Blues to win. So that's why I'm okay with it. But they're going to bust out the yellow helmets. They have to eventually. <laughs> we need Nashville to advance now. They're, give me the yellow helmet. Just one game. Give me the when one did game. they do away with them? No, it's regular season. It was Sat- oh. Golden Saturdays. Remember, like we were like, "Wow, that's a stupid name." It, like when we scared. It, it, it looks awful. No, it looks yeah. amazing. Is what you meant to say? Amazingly uh, bad. Great. Okay, yes. Greg. Okay. I really like this San Jose Shark team. I really like them. I'm I'm going with the Sharks. I just think that they're playing at home. Yeah, we can all agree either way. We won't. We won't be mad. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. We just yeah. need to pick. But no. I'm picking on record. I just want the yellow helmets. I want oh. them back, real bad. <laughs> what Nashville. if they show up tomorrow with yellow helmets? Oh, on? done. Don't oh. even show up, on Sharks. You're jerseys. losing a thousand nothing. What if the Sharks pull out teal helmets to match Ooh, their teal jerseys? Don't you play with my heartstrings? No, they're busting out teal helmet, teal gloves, black jerseys. Oh, Ooh. oh. They can't though. You're only two not? jerseys for the playoffs. Yep. Well, they're busting the rules. Gary's like, I, it looks good. What yeah, if? You look good. What if they allow Nashville to wear their yellows with yellow helmets, and they bust out teal helmet, teal gloves, and black jersey, and that's just the rule breaking for the day, and they go black versus yellow. I love it, but we can't play the what if game. We gotta we move can't. on. We, we can't. gotta you know go. Move I on. Just realized though, just a thought about my head. If the Sharks win the cup, then you could t- say that the six Southern U.S. teams that no one thinks should ever be even have teams, five of the six will have won a Stanley Cup. The only one that has it would be Florida. Florida. Carolina, Tampa, Anaheim, L.A., Sharks. Nope. My dad won't be impressed with that. I guess you could throw <laughs> the Coyotes in there, too. but they have Although, them, but no, we could also have... Not. Just saying. The only other reason to cheer for the Sharks is by Tampa Bay beating the Islanders. We can have the first ever all-shorts matchup where all the fans can be wearing shorts in the that is true. arena because it's so damn hot outside. That is true. Because San Jose Nashville versus Tampa Bay. It's usually... It's Nashville's in Tennessee. It's in Central America. I don't We're think... talking about Southern, like, Southwest versus Southeast. I hate to... That'd be cool. I hate to burst your bubble, but I don't think anywhere has snow in June. None of it. I'm just saying, even Calgary, Tampa, they probably wore shorts. Maybe on the glaciers in Munich. Nonetheless, it's still going to be warm. Okay. It's where people apparently don't care about hockey, but a lot of people are Sharks games, and a lot of people are Tampa Bay games. And holy shit, there was a lot of people at the Nashville game last night. Yeah. That would have been sweet to be at. They have good fans. They do. do. All right. Next series, going east. All right. So the Tampa Bay Lightning were the first team to advance to the conference final. Lame. Let me just set up my, my sniper scope. Make the call, please. Make the call. Tampa Bay Lightning win in five games <laughs> over the New York Islanders. Boom! Sniped it. You guys thought it was crazy. Well, guess what? Tampa, I said it the whole time. Islanders can't keep up with the speed and the skill that is the Tampa Bay Lightning. Okay, and Tampa that, Bay squeaked out when most you're looking, of the series. When you're looking Let's get to, real. for scoring, naturally you turn to Jason Garrison and Brian Boyle. And the guys got it done in a 2 OT game. That's true. Why? Because everyone else is tied from chasing around the triplets. And then Brian Bowles like, oh, don't worry, I'll just stand here and loop nuts one game. But it, and then it was another, from the point. Another series where they didn't dominate. They, 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 they had to come back to win those two overtime games. Hey, good teams will find a way to win. I'm not saying they weren't a good team. But they didn't dominate them. It was very close. It was yeah. five games, but it was very close. You want to know a scary stat? So. Ben Bishop now has four shutouts in elimination games. Pretty good. Four. Not too and bad. I think the record is six. By, by Broder. I think so. Is that not, like... He might have another chance. He might have a chance to make it five. Might. Or six. Potentially. Uh, so, maybe. assessing this series, or I know Cam's not surprised because he picked Tampa Bay in five. But from a fan aspect, from the way the series played out, were you surprised with the outcome of this yes, series? Yes. I was still... I just pick. I I was going to pick Tampa Bay either way, and I'm like, ah, you know what, I'll go outlandish and take five. I, I know Svensson, like, or our goalie guy, he is a Tampa fan, and he was like, they're going to win in five. And I'm like, how? And he's like, they're scoring. He's like, they're going to come out in droves. They won't be able to stop. I'm like, okay, a little bias. But I saw it the whole way that Tampa had the better scoring. Obviously, it's easy to say now because I'm like, oh, they won. I called it. But but they didn't outscore them, really. 
They had, but they, when it came won, to count, they did outscore them. That's it, what I mean. G- game five when it counted for sure. But games three and four, they 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 had to come back in the last couple minutes and sweep go to win. I would just like to say that that's where that's playoff where. experience comes into play. Yep. And that's why I think Town Bay ended up winning in five games. Yep. Is just the lack of experience on the Islanders, and I will be shocked if the Islanders are not in this spot or better next year. I could see him conference finals, especially now actually that Travis Hamanick uh, rescinded his trade request. So yes. he will be staying an Islander. And he is very happy to be there. He calls New York home, which is great. Which also means that it'll actually be interesting to see how the summer plays out for them because they do have some young guys like Josh Hosang, Michael Dalcall, who could come up to the team and actually make a, make a difference there. Ryan Strom will be another year older next year. Jonathan Tavares will be another year older. They've got some free agents, though. From, um, um, Poso and Nielsen, Nielsen are both UFAs. But they will Matt try to Martin, sign. Matt Martin, big part of their fourth line. I know that no one, no one's going to say that's a big deal, but they're, they're, uh, that's a huge their deal. fourth that's line's pretty deal. good. Yeah, I would say they're going to sign two out of the three. Honestly, Oposo can walk out, and Dal Cole or Hosang yeah. will slot right in. Yeah. They won't be the the physical force that he is, but Dal Cole and Hosang can both fly. Yep. Dal Cole especially, but. Hosang's got the stick handling, so does Dal Cole. Dal Cole's a speedster, Hosang's a puck handler, playmaker. They'll, they'll be fine. They're, they're, yeah. they're a good team. They'll be, they'll be just fine. I, t- I agree with Dan, 100%. I think that the, this is obviously a step in the right direction for them. And as much as we talked about Thomas Grice being a huge impact player for them in the first round, when it came to the second round, having Yaroslav Halak would have been better. Just because he just didn't have the experience when it came down to it. And having Halak, if he's 100% going into next year's playoffs, I give them a better chance, 100%, because you've got a goalie who's play, been there, played that, and he's he's got the ability to do it. Very rarely do teams pull Chicago and, you know, the first year they make the playoffs, go to the conference final, and then they're in the cup pretty much every year after that. The Kings, first th- two or three years they made the playoffs after not missing it or after missing for a long time, couldn't get past the first second round every year. And then one year they made it to the final. Then they made it to the conference final. Then they made it to the final again. You know, and that's the path I think the Islanders are going to take. They're not going to take a Chicago where you know they they win the cup two years in and they're three out of six. But and they also slowly, they're, slowly they yeah, build a gradual build. I also don't think there's a Marion Hosa available in the free agents because he was a big part of that 2010 team. But, but what even I will, the first year where they had oh, for sure. they made it to the conference final exactly. Pretty good. Kind of a team that I, I would compare the Islanders to are the Tampa Bay Lightning. In 2009, Tampa Bay Lightning, or, sorry, pardon me, not 2009, 2011, the Tampa Bay Lightning made it all the way to the conference final. Then they had a couple of years of regression. They had a couple of years of regression. And now they found themselves back in the conference final last year and find themselves in the conference final again this year. They actually won the Stanley Cup final last year. The Islanders made the playoffs in 2013, had a regression year last year and the year before that. And now they're back there again, and I see them being there almost every year for the foreseeable future. I would be surprised if next summer at some point, not this summer, but next summer, they don't start trying to sign John Tavares because he's going to be such an integral, integral part of that team. So I could see the, the Islanders being much better after this. But we also also have to remember that the Tampa Bay Lightning got to the conference final without Steven Stamkos. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Anton Stroman. And Anton Stroman. That's a scary thought now, isn't it? I don't know what their prognosis are of coming back. I, I, I still think if they make it to the Stanley Cup final, I'm going to just go out on an, on a limb and say that I could see Stamkos playing if they make it to the Stanley Cup final. How about Strawman? What's his injury? I think he's done for the year. I don't oh, know what his injury is. Based on, what I, based on his Stamkos injury, I don't think he's playing in the playoffs. What do you have again? Blood, blood clot. Oh, man. Which no, means no, they no. put you on blood thinners, which... Is not good. A for a for any kind of contact reasons, because he can bruise and get and damage very easily. But also, if he gets cut, oh, and that, he's, and he's that's on gonna blood bleed. Thinners, that's gonna that's bleed. not good. So gonna it's bleed. not something that they rush you back from. Um, Even exactly. regardless, if it's the Cup final, I I'd, I'd err on the side of caution. Just to be safe, especially because yeah. he's going into a contract, or he is in a wow. contract year. Yeah. But even 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 if it was an a- just, average Joe, you got to be careful. Yeah, it's exactly. The, Pascal Dupuis retired from this. Oh yeah, he went on that crazy. That was you telling me about that, right? Thomas Vokou yeah, 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 that crazy, crazy diet because yeah. they were like, "Oh, do you want wine?" He's like, "Yeah, from time to time." They're like, <laughs> you, "You have, have to eat p- the exact same meal forever now, yeah. so yeah. you make a decision." But well, now he does it because he's so, not playing. Yeah. So I don't think they'll rush him back. If, no. 
I mean, he might. Maybe the doctors will clear him, but I, I don't think so. If you lined up at center against him, and your your centerman, let's say you're Nicholas Backstrom, of Guinea Kuznetsov. No, not even them. Mike Richards. And you line up, and there's Steven Stamkos across from you. Would you not just jokingly, if you know he's on blood thinners, be like, there will be blood. And then win the face-off. Because that's what goes into the Okay, Andrew Shaw. I don't know There will that. be blood. I, I don't know about that. But Steven Stamkos, not please, so still come to Toronto. Thank you. And, and of all the players, you really swung and missed. You should have said Tom Wilson. Ah, you're right. Because yeah. Mike Richards. We don't. We don't. He's hate, trying to rebuild. We don't his hate career. Tom Wilson, but he's building quite the reputation. Who's the Penguins guy? They don't have a Matt Cook anymore. That's true. Brian Rust. Maybe. Maybe. And Shear, forty-three. Yeah, but those guys look like they can actually play hockey. So, Tampa Bay Lightning. What do you think the chances are of them winning and going to the Cup, cup Final again this year? I bet against them both times, and they burnt me both times. But based Dan, on, you're woke. You're you're on the on Blues who, and Red Wings train based on, <laughs> for me. Based on who I think they're going to be playing, I don't think they're going to the final. Okay, and they will be playing the winner of the Pittsburgh Washington series, which is now at three two. They are currently playing as we're recording this podcast. Mm-hmm. Last time I checked, Pittsburgh was up on nothing. Has Filthy Phil Kessel. Zip. What? No. How much? It's 3 nothing. No, it no. is not. You show me with my eyes. That's what I said. 3 zip. No. Yeah, they scored two power play goals. Oh. Okay, well, that I've... I, there was no. A... That was, this, this was the year. Oh. No. Oh, oh, no. No. Damn it. Oh. Maybe that'll change in the next No, it's not. Minutes. It's not going to change. Well, here's the upside. Ovi and Kuznetsov probably have their flight booked to Russia or to wherever the World Championships are. Hey, they got 25 <laughs> minutes to bang three away. But this was their year. This was their year. They had the best team they've had Ted in years. Ted Moneybags Leonsis came to play this year. Okay, let's not get upset. Maybe by the end of this, the, re- no. the game won't be over by this recording. But I'll just answer your question real quick. If Pittsburgh wins, hashtag I believe in Harvey Drewang, which is Jonathan Drewang. However, I, I'll pick Tampa, but I'll be okay with Pittsburgh. Why? Fill the thrill guess. Mm-hmm. I think if, I, I think Pittsburgh's too good. If Pittsburgh wins this series, all I want is one of two things. Either Phil Kessel lifting a Stanley Cup. Or Joe Thornton to lift the Stanley Cup. If neither of those things happen this year, Greg is going to be really mad. Because <laughs> I wanted to see an Ovechkin, and I thought it was this year. And if I can't Hurst. see anything that I want. You want Castle to, to pull a hot dog out of the top of the Stanley Cup and eat it? I don't care what he does. Or you want Joe the Power Stripe Beard Thornton? Oh. I don't care. I just want... a. A triumphant story We're for somebody else. Like, we know the gonna, Caps can pull it out. All if, I'm going to say is if it's Pittsburgh, Tampa, my allegiance is in the West. I don't care who it is. I'm with Dan. I'm I with don't Dan. Care if it's Dallas, I'm with I don't Dan. Give a shit. You I'm guys, with Dan. anybody. My love is Dan. spread too wide. I take a chunk of butter and spread it real evenly sure. everywhere. I want to so see like, somebody okay. new. So that means Dallas is the, the team in the West I wouldn't want to win just because I've seen them win a cup. Dan, I think you just found, figured that out. It's going to be Tampa Dallas in the Cup final. I'm going Dallas. Fuck it. <laughs> we're going. We're Red Dallas. We're going to Dallas. <sighs> okay, so realistically, right now, as a podcast collectively, we have San Jose, St. Louis, conference final on the one side, which means most likely it'll be Dallas versus Nashville because we're so good at picking teams. Probably. And we obviously want to nat- Washington to win, so we know Pittsburgh's going to win because it's going to be Pittsburgh Tampa. So, who do you see of those two matchups going all the way to the conference final of what we picked? God, so let's just say time- Pits- let's say it's Pittsburgh Tampa, and let's just say it's whoever the fuck you want for the West. I'm gonna go. This is an official on the record. I will Penguins Blues. Okay. By the way, uh, our I'm next thinking. podcast will be next Tuesday. It'll be into the second round, so I'll tweet. Into the third round. Our tweet, Greg, round, our yeah. tweet, I will tweet all of our picks as it's starting. And then so we'll read them off on the podcast for those who don't follow us on Twitter. But if you don't follow us on Twitter, what the fuck are you doing with your life? How'd you find us? Then? Yeah. Actually, exactly. way better question. How? How? That is the number one question you have to answer if you're going to be part of our episode 100 extravaganza. Everyone has to bring friendship to this. You do. And that's your friendship. 
And that is your friendship. Telling us how you found our podcast. Kate. But continue. So, Dan. It's not official, right? No, no it's not, not official. official. Right? Not official. Off the, I'm just I'm going to say Penguins Blues. <sighs> just because I'm, I'm going St. Louis. I want the Sharks so Louis. bad. I want the Sharks. So bad. Sharks Penguins. That way, every, all the bases are covered. I want Sharks Tampa. Actually, wait. I want Sharks then Tampa. Greg's guaranteed one of his two. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. I have another correction to make. I would be okay to see Jamie Benn lift a Stanley Cup. I'd be okay with it. I'd be okay with it. I can deal with it. Who's the one? Yeah, Greg will get free drinks. Out of the six teams the left, week. who's the one? Who's the last? Who do you not want to see? Pittsburgh. Wait, wait. Well, wait. no, no, no. Wait, Tampa. Oh. I do not want to see Tampa win a cup. What? No, it's not for any other reason than I want to see Kessel win a cup. I want to see Tarasenko. I, I could. I'd be okay with Tarasenko winning a cup. I'd be okay with Brian Elliott winning a cup. Alex Petrangelo, Kevin Shattenkirk, Brian Wait, Boyle. There's nobody on. Jay Bollmeister. You don't want Brian Boyle. There's nobody to win a on cup? Tampa that drives you, and they're like, "Yeah, I want to see them win a cup." No. Ah. Victor Hedman would be cool, but Tampa is so damn good that yeah. they'll be there again next year. Yeah. So th- they're not intriguing. Do you know how freaking sweet it'd be to see Shea Weber? You know what? Fuck it. Any team for the West can win, and I'm a happy camper. You know, and Phil Kessel needs to let the Stanley Cup. I don't hold him in. I don't have a like. I'm looking at the teams, and I'm like, okay, Tampa. Well, I like Tampa. Pittsburgh, Kessel. Washington, Ovi. And then I'm like Dallas. Ah, eh, not the worst. I and then St. Louis. This these words have come out of my mouth. I want as long as I'm living, I would not like to see. St. Louis won the cup, but but then Pittsburgh wants another one. Okay, hold on. Dallas, Jamie Benn's beautiful. <laughs> Come on. Wait. Nashville, quick question. The Woodsman, San Josie. It's San Josie. I'm um, the least. Man, I don't know. They're all pretty. Who's your least, Dan? Tampa. My Who's least. Nothing against. Them. I Probably. guess because I gotta stand by my word. I'll say St. Louis. I don't want Dallas St. Louis to win it, but I'll no. be okay if they win it. Well, we'll make these obvious predictions when the when the cup final comes. Who does Jimmy Ben hand the Stanley Cup off first to first? His brother or the assistant captain? Who's the assistant who's captain? The assistant? I don't know. Sega? Maybe. No, who's the oldest count? Patrick Sharp? Who's he no? He's won. He's won Three it. Jason times. Spezza. Fiddler. He's never won. Fiddler. You yeah, give it to Spezza. You give it to Spezza. Jordy Ben gets it last because he's only he? there for participation reasons. <laughs> is he even playing there now? I don't know. We have no. If uh, his last name so. wasn't Ben, he would not be on the team. Um, and I stand behind that. I got it. No, I think I'm with Ben. Fiddler. Yeah. He scored on his birthday okay, in front of his parents. Fair enough. How Fiddler, do you not Fiddler's like that? a good story. Fiddler's a good story. You know why I don't All like right. that? Because they fucking won. Uh, wow. Sorry. Wow. Um, okay. I'm falling apart. My so we need just... we need to move on from this, and we are we are pretty much it, from anything that you gathered from that screaming over the last ten minutes is we are passionate hockey fans, and we just we're happy to see whatever happens. We want to see this story the unfold. Way you're, you're, okay, the way you're prefacing this right now, you're like, no, 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 come in, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> we didn't just yell at each other for an hour, like five minutes. Ago. Come on, come in. Christmas! Holidays! You know come what? in! You know what? You're like, whoa, guys, that's, you want me to come back? Or? You know what this that voice reminds me of? is uh, an episode of The Office when Steve Carell's character has a dinner party and his like girlfriend at the time, who was Jane. his Xbox boss, and they just have the most awkward dinner party because they start like bickering about the silliest thing. Like, we could come back. No, it's fine. It's totally fine. Yeah, that's how you're prefacing. They're like, no, no. We're just passionate, <laughs> and uh, the West better win. That's exactly how you're walking. You're saying you want we want the West to win, essentially. Yep. We would like, yeah, a- any of the four teams. I could, I, I get on board with. Yep. But we have to talk, and we have to move on from this shit show of the Cup playoffs to the World Championships to the players that didn't get there. So what do we know so far, other than Canada's playing really well? Patrick Laine became the youngest Finnish player. On a world championship team to, or the youngest Finn on the Finland team world championships to score. And his shot <laughs> is unbelievable. <stupid. laughs> Patrick Liney single handedly is going to stop goalies' equipment from getting smaller. Because if it gets smaller, he's going to shoot a puck through someone's chest. He's going to kill somebody on the You know who's smiling a lot right now? Kevin Sheldon. Mark Shifley. Yeah. No. Kevin Here, Here's the other thing, and I'm going to get, we'll obviously talk about Liney. Finland, once again, is now 3 0. <clears throat> So far in the World Championships. They are continuing their dominance of world play. What? Why 
Are they just that good right now? Actually, I do have an answer for that. This will be if they win the World Championships. No country has ever won in the same year. World Juniors, Ivan Alenka, under 18, and World Championships. About roughly 10 years ago, um, they had a whole new... Um, they basically fired everyone in regards to, like, Hockey Finland. So, Hockey Canada. I don't know what's called. Yeah. Uh, hockey Operations in Finland. And they redid it, and they focused it more on um, creativity... And and like not not like Canada or it's skill where you have kids like running, doing running circuits in their basements or like mm-hmm. at the dry land and like yeah. doing skills where it's like oh robot do this do that these kids got good by having fun and they they put more focus on fun and creativity and this was about ten years ago and now you're seeing all of this pay off because all these kids this would have been when they're six seven eight nine yeah. and like even back at well, like the the older guys or the younger ish guys it would have been 16 17 18 and now like the mid-range guys you see guys playing like even don Skoy for um yeah for san jose like look at he's coming out of nowhere he's like what 24 25 mm-hmm. maybe 26 i'm not sure it's yeah. it's a, it's a great thought for the globalization of hockey to have an because we've always looked at it and we said well the strongest teams are normally Canada, usa russia and sweden for the most part and then kind of Czech Republic, Slovakia can be strong. Same with Finland. But now that Finland's emerged, like, think about it. They don't have their number one goalie there. They don't have some of their best defensemen there. They're missing a guy like Dunskoy there. Like, they don't have their, their complete lineup. And they're still not, like, I... They have a draft-eligible player. That means this player two. hasn't played in, in the NHL yet. They have yet. two. They have is, two. Isn't Puglia Arby playing or no? Uh, I'm not oh, sure. no, I don't think Puglia Arby's playing. Know. Line A is. Line A is for sure. Still, they... When's the last time that's happened? Other than Canada and U.S. who do that regularly, and then Russia the odd time, you never hear, like, Sweden or guys no. like that. They're like, oh, younger guys. And now, like, look at the the their top hole. Wasn't, no, I guess that's a lie. Sebastian Au was the only two out of the top three players were draft eligible on the top line of a championship team. That means they're eligible for two, no, three more years to play at the World Juniors. Two more years. And two, he, sorry. Here's why, just to throw in a I Jets think. thing. Why, why, why I thought that the Jets winning, winning the second pick was more import, was bigger than Toronto getting the first pick because I was reading an article this week and they basically were analyzing Patrick Laine and Austin Matthews because they said it's a lot closer than people think, the rankings of these two players. The, 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 the gap is getting smaller. And some of them, some people even said that they're honestly, they're almost even. Matthews is going to go first because he's a centerman. That, that is the exact same If he was not a centerman, they said it was, it, it'd be a toss-up. Who would go first overall? So that's why I think you look at the Jets. What is the one thing that they don't have? A scoring, a, scoring a like, trigger man, a potential superstar goal scorer. What are they probably going to get? Line it. Potential superstar goal scorer. It, it the cookies fall. The cookie and puzzle pieces fall into place perfectly for both one and two. Yep. And Columbus is just jacked up to be there. Oh, so it's good for them too. Now, good for them too. <laughs> I had this but. thought because of who I am as a Leaf fan. What if? <clears throat> Pardon me. What if the Leafs take Line A first? Because, like, and legitimately, I could see them doing it, especially if they think they could for sure sign Stamkos. Because they can't technically start talking to him yet at draft. But if they can swindle something with Steve Eisenman in the draft or something like that, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they pick Line A because they have something on Stamkos. Because they don't need Stamkos and Matthews. So because they still think they should make a run at Stamkos, I would not be surprised to see Patrick Laine go number one to Toronto, and I would not even be surprised if they don't get Stamkos and pick Laine still. Because Nylander, Laine, and... you know, Mitchie Marner. Mitchie Marner. Pretty damn good first line. I, Young, good first line. There's so, I, there's so much hype train, and they need a centerman, they're picking Austin Matthews. I, there's no way they're not. He's just saying... But, I, 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 yeah, what if? Well then, this but, could, that'd be interesting for the Jets because then what do you? Because you take Austin Matthews, but then you got how many centermen? But Brian Little can move, and then your true. one two are Shifley and uh, Matthews, yes. which isn't bad. <laughs> That's true. And Brian Little's best season, where he scored thirty goals, was when he was on the wing. So if he's on the wing with a guy like Austin Matthews, hold on, I put my finger up to stop you, because how many assists did Kobe have that year? With Brian Little. He didn't play with Kovalchuk. He didn't play on Kovalchuk. He, did he played with Todd White. And he actually oh my Kovalchuk. God, never mind. Because yeah. I thought it was like the OB. It was the little white like, Russian line. He had line. open nets every time. Yeah. It was the, the little white Russian line. I remember watching that because back in the Russian. day, Dan and I, I would come over to All watch three of those games. guys had like 70 some odd points. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And okay. everyone's like, Todd White who? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would like yeah. to, uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. I mean, it creates a bit, 
bit of a, I think. Is that, it a bad I, problem I, to have? A Crosby a, Gino problem? It's I, it's not a bad problem. Is it a problem to have a Sedin Kessler problem? Is it a problem to have a... Ge- no, it's not, Greg. But I think the hype train behind Matthews to Toronto and Line to Winnipeg is too much. I know. I agree. I'm just saying what if. Yeah. But it, it, you're right in the sense... I think that right now... Ow, my hair got caught in my head. Um, right now... <laughs> right now... At the world for for the world championships as they go, I think that Line A has impressed more than Matthews has. Even though Matthews has done well, I think Line A has impressed more. Yeah, because Line A is playing with NHLers. Matthews is on a team captained by Matt Hendricks. Of course, he's not going to do as good. I'm. Who's he playing with though? Uh, I, 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 I watch a game the other day too. I just drawn yeah. blank. You can't. I, I know. No, I, I, I understand. It's, not this, terrible, it's very interesting that to, to, like the the. The main pieces of this tournament are draft eligible eligible players because they make for great storylines. But I'm not putting a lot of stock into this in regards to the actual draft okay. because line is on a line with NHLs full time NHL players. Matthews is playing with like college age guys or guys like Matt Hendricks who are, I mean, I'm sure he's been captain before, but. Who probably wouldn't be captain of you? He probably wouldn't make the team in in any other aspect apart from this for Team USA. I'm sorry, I'm trying no, to be true. True. I'm not trying to be mean, but it's true. So either way, the Leafs and the Jets are both going to get a really good player, and even Columbus. And they're and just sitting there. Columbus. They're sitting there like we don't really care. We hope that one of them picks Poyo Yarvi so we can get the other guy. But either way, I think all three teams win at the end of the day because, yeah. I look, now here's the other question. And I obviously. Line A, if Line A was draft eligible last year, it, being a center has huge stock, obviously, but would he been in the conversation with Eichel and McDavid and Matthews? Because there's been the conversation said that Matthews isn't as good as McDavid, but he would have given Eichel a run for his money for number two. If this was the same and draft and it was top if four? If those were the top four, and where do team- they slot? Obviously, oh, me if I'm slotting them. If you're sliding them, okay. Because um, I guess I've seen all of them play now. Uh, McDavid. I'll say McDavid. I'm gonna say Matthews, but only because of the center part. But Matthews, or sorry, McDavid, Matthews, Line A, Eichel. Eichel four. Yeah, I put it just I, not that Eichel's not an amazing talent, but it seems to me like Line A's. There, definitely ready to play. You're taking the top four players from the last two drafts, so I mean, yeah. e- but even if you're number four in in that group, that's not bad. No, but remember, like, there's only months that separate these guys. It's not like there's two days, couple- forty eight hours. At Austin Matthews earlier, he would have been drafted last year, and he would have been second. That's overall. probably one of the main, uh, a pretty good reason as to why he went over at C's because they're like, I just get the extra year and get paid. Yeah. Exactly, so. and I'm pretty sure his parents didn't care about that. Nope. Okay, so early in the podcast, I told you guys to keep Ken Hitchcock in the back of your heads because I wanted to bring him up right now. There were a bunch of recent signings in the NHL, and we'll get to them in a second here. But if you're an NHL squad, would you not think for a second that, hmm, if St. Louis loses to Dallas, would that mean the end of the Hitchcock era? And I would. why would I not want Hitchcock on my team? Okay. At least, I, I would at say least prolong the process. They've it's a given him, I think he's earned another year based off this year. Yes. And but we, we keep saying that every year. When is the... When is it's the, the same uh, thing with Julian, right? When is right? the axe going to fall? Exactly. It was well, the same thing with Julian. Now, next year, if they don't get out of the past second round at least... Yeah, it's got to be done. So, I, unless, like, GMs knew that it was going to be another year, maybe they are already calling him about it to see what his reaction was going to be, but... If I'm Minnesota, why would I not want Hitchcock? Because he's done wonders with a team like St. Louis. If I'm Calgary, why not? If I'm even Ottawa, why not? But those are the three teams that had goal, uh, coach vacancies and Anaheim as well. Anaheim would go after Hitchcock as well. Oh, that's who you He to. would not be out of a job for very long. So that's all That's all I'm saying. Where did our coaches end up and who got signed? Bruce Boudreaux ended up with the Minnesota Wild. We speculated last podcast that... Chuck Fletcher, the GM of the Wild, was actually in California. Brujo signed uh, with the Minnesota Wild, and he was quoted as saying, I could see this team winning within two years. Wow. And that's he, the cup. He was also quoted as saying, I don't need Getzlaff, Perry, or Ovechkin to win. Um, Bruce, you didn't win with those guys. Ah! <laughs> 
Okay. Just saying. And then we got Brian Boucher, the axe murderer. Signing with the Sens and... Guy Boucher. Guy Boucher. Boucher. Brian Boucher. Brian Brian Boucher. 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 Guy Boucher, the ex-murderer, signs with the Sens as a head coach. And it hasn't officially been announced, but it's widely speculated that Mark Crawford will be the... It has been announced. Or it has been? Pretty sure. Assistant coach will be his assistant coach in Ottawa. So look out. Look out. That's awesome. I like that. I like that. I like Guy Boucher. In Ottawa a lot. You s- and I brought it up earlier in the podcast. 2011, Tampa Bay Lightning were in the conference finals. They were so- a mix of older guys and younger guys. And that's what Ottawa is. They're a mix of older guys and younger guys. They have an older goalie. Just like Tampa Bay had Dwayne Rollison. They have Craig Anderson. They have a young superstar. Steven Stamkos, obviously you can't compare that to Michael Hoffman. But... Similar Mike Hoffman, style. Apparently, Guy Boucher used to coach him. Exactly. I don't know. I really he's not like the best player on that team. I'd say Mark Stone's the best player. No, no, on that I team. know, but that's scary. I think a way. lot of people like Hoffman more than Stone. But you There's also have a player. superstar. One A, one B. Then neither is bad. You still have a superstar defenseman, Eric Carlson. Carlson. So so far, I think they're trending in the right dif- direction. They just need to build up their prospect pool again and try to go from there. Um, I also don't know what their goaltending plan is because they've Craig Anderson for a couple more years, but he's reaching the end of his goaltender years. Then they have Matt O'Connor and the Hamburglar as well. So they've got some interesting decisions there. The other thing is Randy Carlisle has apparently been interviewed um, by some teams. So he might end up in Calgary. Well, that's, really, that's the only spot left, really. Well, I don't know, Anaheim, but, I but he's not going back there, I don't think. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see where... No, does Dallas? Obviously, I don't think Dallas Aikens. Does he get another chance in the NHL? Do you think? Mm, maybe as an assistant, maybe bump his way up to a head coach. Okay. Potentially, I don't know if he'll get a head coaching job right away. No. Not that I don't, I don't think it was his fault with that team, but he had to do. He, he he was dealt a tough hand, and obviously, we all know the problem is management. They're trying to fix that in Edmonton, so I don't I don't place the blame on him for that one. No. Now, going forward, um, pretty big news happened in Arizona this week. 3-1 currently. Uh, I knew you were checking it. Okay. Pretty big news. 26-year-old GM. Yeah. John Chaka. Signed for Arizona. He's 26? Yeah, apparently he's been in the um, organization for a little, a couple years now. Yeah, a couple years now. And so what they did is they named him GM, but all the other hockey guys got, like, promoted, like, more... Um, in their hockey ops, it's all within? No, okay, you're shaking your head. Tell no, me. no, I'm not saying no. I'm saying no as their highest guys have too much influence on this team. Like Dave Tippett's president and coach. He signed for like six years, too, or something, didn't he? When you have guys who are the top of your ownership, they have the, like their ownerships are leading. When you've got guys that are high up there and doing actual management roles and doing coaching and stuff like that, there's too many hands meddling. And... I know Dave Tippett will be like, well, these are the guys I want to coach. you got to let the GM make that decision because now if Tippett doesn't like the direction that the Coyotes are in, he has the authority as president to fire the GM. But he, the GM has no power to fire the coach because the coach is the president. Didn't even think about that. At least that's the way I take it, right? Because so really the... Tippett was named president, correct? Yes. So he's yes. the guy in charge, really. So he's really the guy in charge. And I'm not saying they're... They've got a great pool of prospects. They have Dylan Strom that's going to probably play next year. They have young guys. But I think I think they need a new set of hands on that team to really figure out what direction they want to go in. Because they're in a division where, really, the Pacific Division is a lost division. Because Anaheim's only getting older, and they're kind of lost because they've got young goalies and young D, but their forwards are going to become ancient soon, and their window of winning is closing. San Jose seems like probably the best team in that division because LA. And they're aging. And they're aging. They're yeah. going to lose two superstars in Marlowe and Thornton soon. Yeah. Yep. They've got to figure out where they want to be because remember, a few years ago, Arizona was in the playoffs every single year. And it's only been recently that they haven't been, so they have to figure out where they want to go. They have no one signed for next season. They have to figure out their goaltending situation, because Mike Smith has a few years left, but is he really that great? And Las Vegas is going to be coming into their division soon, unfortunately. But they've got that to deal with as well, an expansion team in your division. And then you've got the 
Like, that division is ready for the taking of a young team to come in and, like, they have to do it properly, but they have to figure out a way to do and it. And you just mentioned a few podcasts ago, look at the cap space Coyotes have. Why not start fresh? You you start fresh, you're at the bottom. You, you've scraped everything clean. You have a few pieces that you've missed. You're like, oh, no, I'll leave it. It's okay. The rain will get it. You can... You have the building blocks right there. Brand new everything. Just restart this year. There's 15 guys that uh, in the Coyotes organization, like on the hockey team, that John Chica took over. 15 that are older than him. Yeah. 15. And Shane Doan is one of them, but he's not How does he go to Shane Doan and tell Shane Doan how to do his job? Shane Doan's been in the NHL since pretty much, what, he's been born, essentially, what it seems like. Um, GM doesn't tell him how to do his job. GM just does... What? Financials. But GM has to sign him, no, he and does. Shane Doan he is does. a free agent going into the season. So that is the issue that he has to go up to a guy that's older than him and try to sign him for a multi-million dollar deal and tell him, "No, you're asking for too much. This is how much you're actually worth." It's a great move because he is part of the analytic movement. I think he's going to be great for the Arizona Coyotes moving forward, but they they have to get it right this offseason. There is no team that has a cleaner slate than the Arizona Coyotes, and they have to get it right this season. This is their offseason to set the groundwork for the future because they could be a dominant franchise when they head to Quebec in a few years. Uh, No, I'm just kidding. Throw it in. Um, But if they they move, but they could be a dominant franchise because they could, they have Dylan Strom, they have uh, Max Domi, and they have Anthony Duclair. They're drafting high this year. They're going to get a top 10 pick. Probably going to go with... I wouldn't be surprised if they get um, either Michael Nylander or uh, the defenseman. The best defenseman. They, they already Ole have... Olivia Olavey. Olivia Olavey. They already have um, Oliver ekman Larson. I think it's a good year for them to try... Like, David Backus is available. Go after him. Marcus Johansson. RFA. Go after him. See what it takes to get him. They have the ability to go after guys and put teams in tough spots. If they go out and offer Marcus Johansson four and a half million dollars, which I don't think is outlandish for a player of his skill, like you can even sign him for four million, you're going to handcuff Washington because they're it's an offer sheet. They're going to have to match it. But then are you going to you're if, willing to give up the compensation? Uh, I think well, be, it's not that much if it's four and a half million dollars. That's right. I think it's uh, two sec- a second or something, whatever. But they've, they've got to imagine that, like I said, the Pacific Division is not that strong. It's right for the taking. Exactly. They had the potential to make the playoffs this year. They did go on that crazy run. They can they do it. They were close all year, though. They, they, were, were, they, were in, they were in that conversation because Vancouver's junk. Calgary, no one knows. Edmonton is... <laughs> Perennially in the contention for a pick. Yeah, exactly. The Canadian teams are a shamble. The... the California teams are good, but old. But they're aging, and their young guys are on monster contracts, so you can't move. Exactly. Arizona has to get it right this season. The right move was made, and I really do like the outlook for next year for them. Tons of cap room, they, and they can do the right moves to get the right players. And then maybe if it does go a little awry and bad, they can, Dave Tippett will pull, remove himself from coach and just be president. Yeah. I like they because I could see that happening in the next like three years if the team can't. Go. If they're if if they can't sign their captain, there's a guy out there that's captain material, just Andrew waiting Ladd. to be signed. I still think Andrew Ladd's going to Florida. I think if there's a team he's going to, it's Florida. Florida. Oh, speaking of Florida, they signed Yarmar Yager to another year. Oh, and Erica Branson, and one Erica year, Branson. three and a half now. Yes, so. That's another teams. team that's going to be just fine losing in the yep. first round. Um, also, Florida, uh, Yarmir Yager has made over, I think, $136 million in just contracts in the he's NHL. He's made the most uh, as any NHL player just straight off contracts. Good for him. He's, yeah. okay, he's, but, he's And he also has four, bonuses. He's 44? He's 44. He'll be 45 next and he's year. Getting, he's not getting jump change. He's getting $4.5 million. Yes. Yeah. He also uh, gets $300,000 bonus, I believe, for each game mark that he makes. So I think there's one at 10, one at 20, one at... 30, 35, 40, and 45, I believe. Games so, played? Yeah, he gets a oh, bonus per game. Florida, played. get it together and win him a cup, please. It'd be great. It'd be great to see. Get, get, Fantastic. you know what, Florida, win next year. Get Luongo and Yager a cup so they can just both retire. And like I said, Florida also has a lot of cap room and they can go out and get another goalie too. Yep. Done. I, like I should be a fucking GM. I really should be. 
I manage my teams in NHL 16 all the way to the top by simulating every game. Why do we have to fucking play? And they still win the cup. They still win the cup. It's called easy difficulty. It's not. I turn my GM difficulty to hard, and I play on All-Star. And I get my teams to the top. Because they win. And I never have draft picks. Because you never use draft picks in NHL. Because the players never pan out. Don't use draft picks. It's true. They are useless. So, I just get really good players for them. My first line right now, I think, is Jamie Benn, William Nylander, and... Uh, who's my right winger? I think I got Kessel back on the Leafs. It's all Kessel. It's all Kessel. So, when we see you next, we'll know the conference finals. We're going to be... Either happy or sad. Depending yeah, on I'll what tweet out our picks uh, when this, the, it officially comes out. So follow us on Twitter at LastManNPC. Also, Gmail, LastManNPC at gmail.com for any questions. Leave your comments down below in the comment section of our YouTube video. Hit that like button if you want to see more. And if this is your first time listening to a Last Man In podcast, and it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button because we'd love to have you. How did you find us? Exactly. Leave that in the comment section below. Also, if you're listening on Podomatic or... Um, Any podcast right. place on your phone. Exactly. Rate us. Give us a rating of five. Out of five. Did you check the email? Yeah. Uh, there was no email. There was uh, just comments. comments basically saying, I, I hope uh, the Leafs would take uh, line A so the Jets would get Matthews. Oh. And then someone said the Jets should take Poe URV, but I feel like it's too far ahead of one, two. So. Mm. But thank you for the comments. It was Joe yes. Brownie and I believe... The sports guy, but I'm sorry if it was And if you want to be in next week's podcast or the week after that, depending if Cam remembers to check comments. I always do now, I promise. Okay. Uh, yeah, just we'll leave a comment out. down below. And also tweet at us because we appreciate it. So thank you.